Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all my expectations, predictions, and speculations for the fourth season of Arrow right here on Otaku Assemble. Weekly and finally here to bring you all the latest and this week's Arrow videos. So, before I jump into my expectations for season four, I want to give you all my brief thoughts. And I mean it this time. Brief thoughts on season three of Arrow. Okay, so, um, I'm going to be honest with you all, Otaku Faithful. I couldn't even finish the third season of Arrow. I couldn't. Um, there were so many things I just couldn't get into. So much disconnect with that third season. Um, so many predictions, or, or rather so many expectations I had that weren't met. So many missed opportunities, I thought. I mean, I, I just honestly and truly thought season three, by and large, was a complete mess. Um, and this is what I'm talking about. Rachel Ghoul, League of Assassins, that entire storyline I thought was so mishandled. And and here's the thing. Um, for, first and foremost, I just want to throw out this pet peeve. The fact that the characters didn't even have a consensus on how to pronounce his name. Some characters say it Raish. Some characters say Raz. I'm like, how the hell you don't even have the same... The, uh, how do... It's one thing to mispronounce the character's name. It's another thing to have the characters themselves. They don't have a consensus on how to pronounce the name. It's... All right, I'm done. Okay, so that 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 little pet peeve, that that little nitpick, is passed. But in more detail with that whole thing, here's my thing with that. I'm not saying that it couldn't have worked. Because for any of you guys, for any of you all who are comic book readers, you guys, if you read DC, you know that Raish has appeared in many other superhero comics. He has been the main antagonist in many other um, storylines that occur in other comics. So the, just the fact that he is predominantly a Batman villain, that didn't really matter. You know, you, you could have still, he could have still worked within Green Arrow, within Green Arrow's mythos, within his mythology, within his world. Raish could have still worked. My problem was, though, they changed Green Arrow in order to try to fit into the, the League of Assassins type storyline instead of the other way around. They changed Oliver's character so much that they pretty, I mean, they pretty much were, was doing a Batman Begins so that he could fit within this storyline dealing with the League of Assassins and with Ra's al Ghul instead of doing the opposite, instead of doing what I thought they were going to do given what we got with the League's introduction in Season 2. Instead of taking the League and fitting it within the Green Arrow world, no, they did the opposite, and it didn't work. Not at all. I, 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 I... I I don't think it worked. And the only reason why I think it was as well received as it was, which to my recollection from what I heard and what I read from other fans of the show, from other critics, um, they didn't care for that storyline either. But for the people who did enjoy it, I think that the only reason why they did it was because they wrote it like it was Batman. And people like Batman. That was it. That's the only reason why I think it succeeded as little as it, well, as little, but as, you know, as much as it did. That's, that's my only reason for that. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I just couldn't get behind it. Like I said, mishandled. Once again, I'm not saying that it couldn't have worked. I'm, I'm just saying they didn't do it as well as they could have. Huge letdown with that. Um, but then again, by and large, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Ever since season one, when we found out that uh, Raish and the League, that they were that organization behind the undertaking in season one, ever since we found out that that's what they were doing, where, that's where they were going, I was kind of skeptical from, from the get-go. Um, 
because uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see. Moving on. So, but besides that, okay. So the one one more thing I want to talk about in regards with Oliver more specifically, um, the flashbacks. I don't think the flashbacks are working anymore. Here's the thing. In season one, it made sense. I think it worked in season one. Why? Because consider this. In season one, what were we getting? We were getting, okay, we were getting two origin stories simultaneously, right? We were getting Oliver becoming Green Arrow in Starling City. That was the present day storyline. And then in the flashbacks, we were getting Oliver becoming the man he was going to be in the present. So we were getting two simultaneous storylines going on. Okay, Oliver, his origin as a character, and then Oliver, his origin as a superhero. That's what we were getting. And the what they managed to do in the first season, which I think re worked really well, was that, if you will recall, it seemed like whatever the story or the plot or the conflict of the flashback was, it correlated um, with what was going on in the present. The themes of both conflicts, of both plots, of both stories mirrored each other. And why that was so important in season one was because it was like, okay, we're seeing Oliver's growth. We're seeing his development as a character. We're seeing how, okay, this is Oliver's present predicament, right? Okay, how will he handle it? Well, let's go to the flashback and see how he handled it back then. And then by episodes in, that's when we got, okay, is he going to handle this the same way he did the first time around? Or is he going? If has he learned a new way to handle this? A better way to handle this? And we saw that compare and contrast between the two. That worked in the first season because we are still being introduced to this character. Fast forward to season two, and here's the thing. I think in season two, it might have worked even better, but the only reason why that was was because our main antagonist for season two was directly connected to the flashback, Slade. The, the flashbacks with Oliver and Slade and with Sarah on the island, those things directly correlated with the present. Why? Because Slade was present in the present storyline. He was there. And so what they did in the second season, okay, if, if season one was establishing Oliver as a character, right, telling two origin stories simultaneously, then what season two was doing the flashbacks in season two was providing that backstory, that um, that background that we needed, so that we could understand the the rivalry between Oliver and Slade. We so that we could better understand their conflict. Why is it that now these once former allies are on opposite ends of the coin from each other? Why 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 are they opposing each other? That background that's what we needed in the flashbacks with season two. That made sense. We get to season three, and now we're dealing with Oliver. He's off the island. He's in Hong Kong. He's he's more or less been shanghaied by um, Amanda Waller, by Argus. He's being forced to act on their behalf. And this is where the flashback thing really broke down. They're still trying to make each episode correlate, right? They're still trying to make the flashbacks line up with the theme of the present episode. They're still doing that. But, but this is where it, it gets jarring. We are seeing Oliver become a killer in the flashbacks when in the present, Oliver is not supposed to be a killer. Let me repeat that. We are supposed to be seeing Oliver become a killer in the flashback, but in the present, he's not supposed to be a killer. It is very fucking jarring when you are showing two, in essence, two completely different fucking characters, and then you're trying to make their themes correlate. You're trying to make them line up with each other. That doesn't work in the same way. No, 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 no. And here's the thing. It might have worked if it's supposed to be this sort of, like, lesson learned, just like what they were doing in season one, where it's like, okay, let's see how Oliver handles this situation in the future, um... 
by uh, compared to how he handled it in the past, right? If it was supposed to be that thing about, okay, this this is how Oliver has become the better man sort of thing. But they didn't really do that. I think that's what they were trying to do, but it, 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 didn't, it, didn't, it did not work out. Especially with the episode, um, I'm trying to remember which one it was. It was the one, I think it's the one when, what is it? There's this guy, like... Okay, China White is in Hong Kong in the flashback, and she acquires this bomb, and Oliver has to torture this guy in order to find out where she's located and shit like that. And then, but at the same time, we have Oliver sort of going on this, uh, this sort of like war path against um, Malcolm, Malcolm Merlin, and you know, trying to figure out what's going on with Thea, and this, this, that, and the other, and I'm like, dude, th these two things aren't even trying to fucking add up. I mean, I I know y'all are trying to shoehorn them in together, but but no, it's 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 not adding up. It's it's not working. Um, yeah, I I I just think that the flashbacks did not fucking work in season three. The only thing I think that the flashbacks actually contributed well to was the backstory for uh, what's Sale, I believe is his name, the guy who saved Oliver after his duel with Rache. And pretty much he was the one that kind of, you know, he was the turncoat within the League of Assassins to help Oliver. And they were both working for Amanda Waller in the flashback. Setting up his little storyline, I think, was the only thing that the flashbacks did right. Um, but then again, I mean, he was such a small character to begin with, I don't really think it mattered. I, but that's the only thing I think the flashbacks did right. Alright. So what am I, I'm at like at seven minutes into this video now. Okay, other things with season three. Laurel, Laurel's entire fucking story I thought was just fucked. Just fucked. I don't, just fucked. It, 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 it just... Mm. None of it worked, and it could have. Her dealing with Sarah's loss could have been could could have could have made for some real interesting um, character development, especially since she's supposed to be dealing with Sarah's loss and taking up the Black Canary mantle at the same time. They could have done some real interesting things with Laurel as a character, and instead they used her as a whipping boy. They they. They used her as the uh, the trial and error type superhero where, you know, she's kind of starting out on her own and she doesn't really know everything. So we're going to see her fuck up repeatedly before she finally seems to get the hang of everything. Um, they made her let. But here's the thing, though, by doing that, this is what you did. You made her less capable. You made her seem uh, less independent. You made it seem like she couldn't handle things on her own. You actually weakened her. So that you could try and give her, you know, this this sort of uh, this sort of higher place later on. You know what I'm saying? This this sort of like, oh yes, this. It, it seemed like they were trying to do this bullshit self empowerment thing, but that doesn't really work when you give the character a crutch to begin with. When you cripple them from the start, you know what I mean? It's it's not the same thing as like them naturally coming across opposition, them naturally coming across trouble, them naturally coming across conflict within becoming this superhero on their own merit. No, 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 no. That's not what y'all did. Y'all threw every fucking thing you possibly could at Laurel, and y'all been doing it since season fucking one. I mean, just terrible. Just fucking terrible. And I'm sorry, but... Sarah was such a good black canary from Jump Street, and she actually was my... Not only was Sarah such a good black canary to begin with, she was actually my favorite character in the show. So when y'all killed her off at the end of the first fucking episode of this season, I was like, I have no fucking reason to keep watching this. Seriously, that, that's how I felt. I was like, they killed off my favorite character in the fucking season three premiere. Why should I even keep watching it? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. If it wasn't for the fact that I knew that Sarah was coming back for Legends of Tomorrow, I probably wouldn't keep watching this fucking show. Seriously. Because I struggled. Because like I said, I only made it like halfway through season three. And I struggled to make it that far. I skipped episodes because they were that fucking bad. Um, 
what they were doing with Roy, I have no fucking clue. And then all it ended up amounting to, I believe they wrote Roy out of the series. I think he's supposed to come back in season four, but only as a guest star. I don't think he's going to be a regular because now Fia's the new Speedy, which, for the record, I'm going to put it to you like this. I didn't watch the episodes leading up to her becoming Speedy. I, I actually read about the shit on Wikipedia. I was like, you know what? I can't sit through this shit no more. I'm just going to read about it on Wikipedia. I actually like that idea. I, I liked the idea of Thea being Speedy. And it's one of the things I actually am looking forward to in season four. But once again, it's because my expectations are somewhere else. And I'm almost positive the writers are not going to meet that expectation. But I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, so going back to what I was saying with Laurel, yeah, Laurel's whole thing, I thought they fucked that up. Wildcats, storyline, I thought they kind of fucked that up. Uh, good, good in concept, the idea that he was like a retired vigilante himself, but the fact that they made him so young, the fact that they, uh, I, I do kind of like the idea of, uh, that they had with sort of him in the failed apprentice sort of thing, because it was directly mirroring what was going on at the time with uh, Oliver and uh, Roy. But then they didn't bring Laurel into that. Like, she was present, certainly, but they didn't make that. They made that more about Oliver and Roy than they did about Wildcat and Laurel. And I'm like, what the fuck? No. Another missed opportunity. So, uh... And honestly and truly, and I'm not going to lie with you guys, Fia's storyline was the only thing I actually could stomach, despite the fact that I am, I'm going to call it for what it was. I thought it was bullshit, but it was the only thing I could actually stomach, and yes, I'm biased. I like Fia. I like the actress. I like her as a character. Um, I think that th what they were doing with her this season was a lot better than what they did with her last season. Not much better. We're talking about like maybe this much, but I could stomach that. Um, everything going on with Ray and Felicity, uh, I kind of got worn down after a while with that. And to be honest with you, I don't think Ray was a fit for this show. I think, like, I loved when Ray um, guest starred in the crossover episode in Flash because I thought he fit more within that world, the light-hearted, comic bookish world. But him in the dark and gritty world of Arrow, I, 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 um, I, couldn't get, I couldn't get into it. And then having the whole love triangle with Felicity, Oliver, I'm, I'm, I'm so done with love triangles, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not even fucking kidding with you guys. I'm done with that shit. I am so fucking fed up with love triangle. I can't take the shit no more. I can't fucking do it. I'm tired of this shit. I'm, I'm done with the love triangles, okay? This, okay, I already put up with this shit for 10 years on Smallville, all right? I had to deal with this shit with season one of fucking, well, yeah, season one of fucking Flash. Um, we've already had this shit in, have we done it in every season of Arrow? Because season one, yes, yes, we have season one. Oliver, Laurel, and Tommy. Season 2, Oliver, Laurel, and Sarah. And then Oliver, Sarah, Felicity. And then Oliver, Laurel, Felicity. We've been doing this shit too much. I'm done. I've had it. I've had it. I'm done. I'm done. If this was a high school love drama, okay. Why? Because that shit happens in high school all the time. But these are grown-ass men and women. These characters are adults. No. No. No, we're done with that. I'm, I'm done with the love triangles. I can't take the shit no more. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it anymore. I cannot fucking do it anymore. I'm done. All right. What else about season three? All right. For the most part, I'm, that, that's pretty much all I got for season three. Now, here's the thing. I, don't, I didn't mean... Well, no, this isn't really like a season three review, not in the same way like what I did with my with my Flash video where I talked about. I think it was more important to bring up all of these issues in this video, because here's the thing. When I'm talking about my expectations, my predictions, my speculations for season four, pretty much everything I said 
up to this point in this video is shit I'm looking for them to correct in season four. Number one, Oliver Queen is not is not Bruce Wayne. Green Arrow is not Batman. Let's get out of this shit. Let's stop doing this shit. Stop writing him like Batman. He is not Batman. I want my motherfucking Green Arrow. I want my fucking old school lefty. My, you know, stick up for the little guy. My street level crime fighter. Green Arrow. Okay? That's who I fucking want. The Green Arrow that we got, that we had in Justice League Unlimited. That's the Green Arrow I want. Fuck, I'll even take the Green Arrow we got in Smallville. That's the Green... Well, that Green Arrow was... Uh, they they kind of played up the, the whole billionaire playboy asshole bit with Oliver and Smallville. But at least, fundamentally, it was still about sticking up for the little guy. You know, that, that street-level, do-right-by-the-people, that, that classic Robin Hood-esque green arrow that's what the fuck i want i don't want the i have to do everything by myself i can't trust anybody people's lives are in danger oh i have all these past demons and they're eating away at me i have to be something else i am something else i am vengeance i am the night i am goddamn green arrow i don't want that shit Stop it. Stop it. We're, 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 let's get past that. They already said that season four was supposed to be more lighthearted, um, a little bit more comic bookish. She's actually going by the moniker Green Arrow now. This is what they're telling me, and I'm not holding my breath. But on that note, now I'm going to bring up the whole thing I mentioned earlier about Thea becoming speedy. And why I like it so much, why I like the idea so much, is because now Oliver and Thea are both in the superhero business. They're both siblings. One is the hero, one is the sidekick, one is the mentor, one is the student, and most importantly, like I just mentioned, they're brother and sister. The idea that you have two siblings, two family members now in the same line of work, that is going to introduce a whole new dynamic to the series and to the team that they have yet to explore because remember even with Sarah and Laurel Laurel was not a superhero when Sarah was still around so we didn't have that now we have that now things get a little bit more personal now things now the stakes every mission the stakes are a little bit higher why because Oliver is at risk of losing his sister Thea is at risk of losing her brother now we can have some interesting fucking family dynamic going on on the show other than bullshit. Oh, I have to lie to you to protect you. Oh, you're keeping secrets from me. Oh, this. Oh, that. Woe is me type bullshit. Now we can get some interesting shit going on. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am not holding my breath. Why? Because I don't think the writers will capitalize off of it. I don't think they will use it. I don't think they will get the most out of that they set it up and it's a good idea and i like the idea a lot of interesting possibilities i don't think i think they're just gonna spoil it i think they're gonna waste it i don't think they're gonna be able to no expectations right no i'm, I'm not exp it's what i would like to see but i don't think they'll actually do it all right uh let's see other expectations um I don't know what the fuck to expect with Laurel. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really don't care. I don't, I, I've don't. i never liked Laurel as a character. I definitely don't like her as Black Canary. My thoughts on Laurel are the same thing as my thoughts on Iris. And that's because the writers use both Iris and Laurel. as they, they, They're that same type of fucking character. They're... Uh, I'm at 25 minutes on this video now, guys. And that would be a whole nother video having to deal with the bullshit about Iris and Laurel and all that type of shit. I will say this, though. I will say this. To any of my viewers who also follow uh, Melina Pendulum on YouTube, she did a video talking about the female characters in the CWDC universe. Check out her video. Matter of fact, I'll link it in the description box below because she, she talks about it at length and she hits all the fucking nails on the head. All of them. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you all... 
I'm gonna put that video, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. Y'all go check that out. Um, see what I'm talking about. All right, uh, like I said, I don't know what they're gonna do with Roy now. I know he's supposed to be in season four to some capacity, and I think he's supposed to be, is he gonna be Arsenal or is he gonna be Red Arrow? I don't know, I think they're gonna change his name to Red Arrow this time, and he's pretty much gonna be like the red, you know, the, the uh, pretty much like the, is he supposed to be like the anti-hero Green Arrow? Is I don't know if that's how they're gonna write him. I don't even know. Um, I don't even I don't even know at this point what they're doing with Roy. I can't figure this shit out. Um, yeah, I can't figure that shit out. We know Diggle's getting a fucking costume. Which why the fuck Diggle needs to be, get a costume? I swear to God, I don't fucking know. Um. It look I, I I've seen it. It looks ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. It's like, can't we just have the brother, you know, in his regular clothes, or at least, or give him a tactical outfit? I mean, fuck, he's a secret agent. He's for a former marine. Give him a goddamn tactical out tactical outfit. Um, you know, camouflage or something. Let's see. We okay. We we do know this. There's going to be a huge influx of new villains. In this season, I think, because I, I mean, superhero hype, I've been reading the articles, and man, it's like, for a while, it's like every week, there's like new casting, you know, so-and-so got cast in the show as this character, so-and-so got cast in the show as this character, they're supposed to play a villain, they're supposed to do this, so I take it we're getting a shit ton of new characters in this season, um, I mean, uh, the only thing I would expect to that, for, for that, my only expectation for that is, hopefully, it'll be enough characters to give us more variety in the show. Because even with season three, it seems like a lot of the villains in season three were almost the same note. What were they? They were either murderers, mob bosses, um, did we have any corporate criminals in season three? I'm trying to remember. But most of them were like, murderers or mob bosses um or or of course they were connected to the league of assassins um i don't recall many super villains necessarily i i know slade came back in season three captain boomerang was in season three but i'm not recalling many super villains so hopefully we get more of the comic book variety when it comes to our villains for season four that's what i'm hoping um and also, I'm, I'm not sure how many new heroes we're going to be getting. I think, once again, like I mentioned in my Vixen review, Vixen's going to be in Season 4. I know uh, Constantine's coming back. Matt Ryan's coming back to reprise his Constantine role in Season 4. I'm real curious to see how that fuck that's going to work. Um, yeah. So, anyway... I'm, I'm, I got a minute left on this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Like I said, I mean... Mostly what I expect for season four, just correct everything that you fucked up in season three, please. If you could just do that and nothing else, I'd be fine. That's mostly what I want. But anyway, with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief. I'm signing off. Please leave your thoughts on season three and season four in the comments below. Also, like, share, subscribe, what have you. Um... Sons of Anarchy Season 7 Thoughts tomorrow night. And with that being said, this is Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief, signing off. Till next time, peace.